welcome to the Center for Simulation-Based Learning's orientation video series. To make each learning opportunity as valuable and meaningful as possible, it is important that you understand the capabilities of your patient simulator, along with the expectations for your actions during a medical simulation. This video is your introduction to Laerdal's SimMan 3G, a wireless high fidelity patient simulator. SimMan 3G is a computer controlled full body adult mannequin with realistic anatomical landmarks that can simulate a wide variety of lifelike physical findings. While the simulator is able to detect certain medical interventions, its capacity to respond is limited and instead relies on a simulator operator to drive the appropriate underlying physiologic changes. These changes may be observed on an accompanying clinical patient monitor that will display appropriate vital sign tracings and values, including electrocardiogram, oxygen saturation, and arterial blood pressure. SimMan 3G has a large number of features that include the ability to produce different sounds, an anatomically correct airway, spontaneous breathing with chest rise and fall, measurable cardiac rhythms, and other clinical signs. Embedded beneath the skin are a series of small speakers that produce normal and abnormal heart sounds, lung sounds, and bowel sounds. Kortikoff sounds may also be heard when taking an oscillated blood pressure in the left arm. Interacting with the simulator is easy, as the operator may speak through the simulator via a microphone, along with a set of pre-recorded vocal sounds. Please, give me something for this pain. It hurts. It really hurts. SimMan 3G is also able to recreate several airway complications. It may present with mild or severe tongue edema, pharyngeal swelling, laryngospasm, decreased cervical range of motion, or trismus. As SimMan 3G has an anatomically correct airway down to the level of the bronchi, several airway management procedures are possible. In many cases, a head tilt, chin lift, or jaw thrust will be necessary for bag valve mask ventilation. A number of airway adjuncts may also be inserted, such as an oral or nasal airway, endotracheal tube, and laryngeal mask airway. In addition, the simulator will also allow for oral tracheal, nasotracheal, or transtracheal intubation, as well as surgical cricothriotomy. Failure to properly place an airway may result in right main stem intubation with unilateral chest rise or stomach distension. You may also experience variable lung resistance and compliance when ventilating. A tension pneumothorax may be relieved by performing a needle decompression at the appropriate site using a 22 gauge needle to minimize simulator damage. A complete chest tube insertion may also be performed on the simulator's left or right side. The carotid pulse will only activate when palpated and pressure must be applied before a pulse can be felt. Seven pulses can be palpated on the simulator at the carotid, brachial, radial, femoral, popliteal, posterior tibialis, and dorsalis pedis sites. The simulator is supplied with a pulse oximeter, which can be attached in the usual manner. At the other sites, care must be given to apply gentle pressure, as too much force will eliminate the pulses. Attaching a three-lead ECG to the simulator's connection studs will monitor cardiac rhythms. The mannequin you will be using can be defibrillated, if needed, using a real defibrillator. If the mannequin is equipped with defibrillation plates, then the defibrillation should be performed using handheld paddles, but not using conductive gel pads. If the mannequin you are using is configured with defibrillation posts, you will need to defibrillate using the electrodes supplied with the mannequin. 
attach the electrodes directly to the posts located on the mannequin's torso. Do not use standard defibrillation pads with SimMan as they damage the mannequin. When performing CPR, compressions will generate palpable pulses. Pulses and compression artifacts will be visible on the patient monitor. In simulations involving trauma, active bleeding may be present and should be controlled as you would control any other bleed. To manage fluids, vascular access is possible through a pre-placed IV site in the left and right arms. Intraosseous access is also possible through the tibia and sternum. The simulator is capable of producing a number of other clinical signs. Both tonic and tonic-clonic seizure activity can be simulated and is visible bilaterally in the mannequin's arm movements. A low oxygen saturation will be noticeable by cyanosis of the lips produced by two blue LEDs inside SimMan 3G's mouth. The simulator can also produce tears, vomit, urine, and exhibit diaphoresis. Finally, full pupil reactivity can be emulated with bilateral or unilateral constriction and dilation. Response to light can be dilated asymmetrically. This concludes the video orientation for SimMan 3G Patient Simulator. Please note that every effort should be made to accompany this video with a hands-on training session with an experienced simulation instructor. We hope that you have both an enlightening and engaging experience.